Hello and welcome, I'm JD and in this tutorial we're going to go through everything related to movement. This is an updated tutorial after the release of the modular missile update. So first let's have a look at how ships in Nebula's Fleet Command move. Well they have six degrees of freedom, which means ships can go down, up, left, right, as well as forward and backwards. And they do this through the use of their main engines, which provide the forward thrust. And then along each ship is maneuvering thrusters, which will cause the ship to turn. So in this case, these thrusters will turn the ship right. These thrusters will turn the ship left. These thrusters will turn the bow of the ship down. And then underneath, you have more thrusters, which will put the bow up. So something to be aware of is that the thrusters and engines over time will take damage through a normal combat. So that'll degrade their effectiveness for turning as well as forward movement. And that if you lose the drive component, which powers these engines, then you're not going to be able to move at all. So at the bottom of the screen, you can see the speed indicator, and that'll tell you how fast you're going in meters per second. As ships accelerate, they'll increase their speed up to a maximum that you can identify within the fleet editor over on the right hand side of that screen. As ships come into their final point, then they will use their ship's opposite thrusters. In this case, the thrusters built into the nose of the light cruiser in order to come to a full stop you can achieve your top speed through any of your thrusters. However, it is faster to accelerate with your main engines than it is to accelerate with your maneuvering thrusters. You can identify your thruster power listed underneath the speed by hovering over it to show you what that speed is based on the current status of your maneuvering thrusters and your engine. During normal movement, you can change how fast you want your ship to go by using the throttle command. So it defaults to full, which is 100% of your speed. You can also have it at one third, two thirds, or back to a full speed. And you also have the option for flank speed, which we'll cover at the end of this tutorial. To move your ships around, we can do it in either the game view, which is the view that we're currently in, or by pressing the space bar, which is the default hotkey, we can access the tactical map. Tactical map, which can then be scrolled in and out using the scroll wheel, will allow us to see all the terrain and is best for plotting long distances and macro movements, whilst coming into the game view is a little bit better for those minor tweaks. And when we get into movement, it's sometimes hard to plot a movement order at the bottom of the terrain just due to the camera angle. To fix this, you can flip the map. So by holding Control, Shift and the space bar as the default, you will invert the map and so that the bottom of the terrain piece that we just looked at is now the top and we can place a movement order at the top to be able to move around that piece of terrain. Here I have the map animation turned off and you can enable that or turn it off by coming into settings, accessibility, then enabling skip camera flip animation in order to turn it off, or if you want it on, deselect that. So let's get into giving movement orders. Orders can only be given once a ship is selected and you can do it in two ways. First, you can right click to open the orders panel and then select the move a subset of commands to bring up all movement orders. Or you can use the hotkeys listed under the orders in order to give that order. Anything with a plus sign indicates that you need to hold shift plus that hotkey. So the first command we're gonna look at is the move to position command. And that is your basic command to move around the battle space. Upon selecting the move to position command by left clicking, a blue radial widget will appear. This widget will enable you to move in 3D space. So the basic functions of the, the widget is if I move my mouse around, I can change the direction. If I move my mouse in and out in relation to my ship, I can change the distance. If I hold down the control button whilst moving my mouse up or down, then I can change the elevation. The information presented to us on the radial widget shows us how far it'll go, here it says 1,000 meters, and it will also show the time it'll take to get there, being 35 seconds. If I come into the tactical view, I can see the exact same radial widget as previously shown on the game view. I can set waypoints for my ship to follow by holding shift and then selecting with the left mouse click in order to set each waypoint. In order to set the final waypoint, I release shift and then left click in order to set that. If at any point I want my ship to stop, then I can order a full stop. And I can do that by right clicking, opening the auto panel, coming to the movement, and then coming down to all stop, which is also shift plus spacebar. Upon ordering full stop, my ships will engage their thrusters to counteract the forward acceleration 
and bring my speed back down to zero, holding me in place. All ships arriving at their final waypoint will decelerate and come to a full stop. So when you set your movement orders around the map, you want to be aware of this so that your ships don't get into a position where they can no longer move and simply become sitting ducks. If you don't want this to occur, what you can do is use another movement function being the drive course. Drive course accessed again by opening the order panel and selecting course will allow you to set which direction you want your ship to go in and the ship will then continue to go in that direction until told otherwise. Be aware you may actually cross a withdrawal line and that ship will then be withdrawn from combat rendering it unusable to you after a time delay. So here if I set drive course you can see that the blue line will just continue instead of having a waypoint at the end and if I zoom out you'll see that my ship is going to continue to drive along the blue line passing the withdrawal line and leaving the battle space until I tell it to do anything else. Moving in 3D is a bit of a challenge for those who have not done it before. And so to understand where you are, particularly in terms of elevation, if you hold down control and then, as we showed, move your mouse up and down, you'll be able to move your ship up and down in the battle space. And if you notice in the background, two things occur. One, the orange line projected on the terrain goes up and down as I move my mouse, but so too does the withdrawal line. And this is how you can tell where your ship is relative to it, the plane it's on. If I continue to go down, you'll see that the asteroid to the bottom right of the screen has the orange line appearing over it. And as I move up, you can see that the asteroid off to the left where the other two green ships are is also now displaying that orange line. So use these as indicators when moving your elevation markers up and down so that you understand whereabouts you are and then you can plot your waypoints accordingly. You can order your ship to hold a particular heading by selecting the hold heading movement command. Upon selecting that command, you'll be presented with a yellow sphere, which is known as the sphere widget. You would have also seen this open up for the drive course movement order. And by using this widget, you can set not only the direction, but the elevation that your ship's heading will assume. You can hold control to bring the sphere in or out in order to help you set that heading. You can change your camera's direction around the sphere widget by holding down the left mouse click and then dragging your mouse to the left or to the right. It's best when operating the sphere widget to have the camera situated behind where you want to point your ship or operate the sphere widget as operating on the other side as I am currently now is a little bit harder. So when I'm happy with where I want my heading, so I want my heading to be facing up and away, two things will occur. One, the sphere widget will disappear. And two, and a heading arrow will also appear, which the bow of your ship will turn and align to. In the tactical view, you can see your ship's current heading represented as the line within the green circle that you've selected. If I enter back into the game view, the bow of my ship will align with this line here. And there you go. Once your ship achieves the heading that it is focused at, it will then remain focused along that heading until you tell it otherwise. If I give an order now, you can see that the main engines aren't being used to propel my ship. In fact, the maneuvering thrust is on the right hand side of my ship that is now moving my ship over to the final waypoint. There'll be times where you want to direct the role of your ship so that your weapons and your point defense options are facing a particular way. And you can do this by opening the order panel, coming to move and selecting roll. A yellow circle will then appear around your ship with the white arrow being the way that the top of your ship will face. So if I want the guns on the top of my ship to face to the left, then I will move the arrow to the left relative to my ship. And then we will see like the heading order has an arrow to indicate which way the bow of the ship will move. The roll order also generates an arrow, which will then align with the top of your ship. Unlike the sphere widget, the roll order doesn't operate very well in the uh, tactical view. With the line not being able to be resized using the control key. So if you want to set the roll command, it's best coming into the game view and then positioning your camera so that you can clearly operate around the yellow circle. Likewise, if I give an another movement order, not only will the heading remain, but my roll will also remain pointing in the directions that I have requested. And my ship will then move to the final waypoint 
this time different thrusters slowing us and decelerating us into the final waypoint because I've set that roll. As a newer player, it's advisable to not use the roll too heavily as your ships will naturally roll to the target once you give a fire order. So if I give a fire order now, and that is directly to the right, you'll note that my ship doesn't roll, but my cannons can't fire because the target is masked by the hull, meaning that they aren't able to bear to target. If I was to cancel the roll order, then the guns would align to the firing solution that I requested and they would engage. Likewise, the guns will also do this for heading. So if you don't have heading or roll selected, then your ship will always manually move into a, the best firing solution that it can possibly achieve. And that may include it also moving sideways or sideways at an angle in order to get the best possible firing solution at all times. Too many weapon control groups or too many weapons firing at different targets can confuse the ship and therefore cause it not to roll or achieve its heading correctly. If you do get to the point where you need to cancel roll and heading, there is an order for that into the order panel and you want to click clear heading and roll. Now this won't affect any movement commands. So I'll give a movement order. I will issue my clear heading and roll. And you'll see both of the indicators for heading and roll have disappeared, yet my movement order still remains. My ship will then rotate into the best possible position and the guns will start to turn to fire at the firing solution that I gave off to the right hand side. There they go. Without any heading or roll options selected and with no fire control orders selected, your ships will always return back to an upright position. The next command we'll look at is the orbit command. The orbit position commands allows your ship to orbit around an anchor that you'll select. Again, we open the radial widget, which you would have been familiar with for movement orders. Here, we're going to be able to select a point in space that our ship will rotate around. Here, I'm going to select a point 500 meters off to the left hand side relative of my ship. Upon confirming the movement order with a left click, the sphere widget will appear with some slight amendments. First, you'll notice that as I move my cursor up and down, not only does I dotted line move and pivot around the sphere, and I've just made the sphere a little bit larger so that it's easier to see. As I move my mouse cursor down, we start with a arrow facing to the left or counterclockwise. And then as I come to the other side of the sphere, it then faces in the opposite direction. This is the way your ship will orbit and it will follow along the dotted lines. So as I move my mouse cursor down and up, you can choose a path for your ship to orbit. Here, I'm going to have my ship orbit at a 45 degree counterclockwise orbit path and it's going to be 500 meters around the anchor that I've set. To help indicate how this looks, I've sped time up by a factor of five. I don't see a lot of people use the orbit command, nor do I use it much myself, largely because I want my ships to generally continue to move and not be stuck in one location, but also because ships can be quite slow and larger ships are harder to orbit around a position due to the fact that they are consistently accelerating and decelerating and it's easier to actually move them to another position using a movement order than it is to have them continually operate in this fashion. It's also a little bit unpredictable and a little bit uneven with the way that the ships orientate and move around the orbit anchor. As you can see here, it keeps going nose first and then engine. So here at the bottom point of this orbit, the engine is facing towards the anchor, and as we come back up to the top, then the bow will be facing. If this was also a firing solution, firing at something in the middle, it means that I'm exposing the rear of my ship, which has my engines, my drives, and my power, as we discussed at the beginning of this uh, tutorial, that enables the enemy to target those where I want the stronger parts of my ship being the bow facing towards the enemy. Not only can you orbit a position in space, but you can also orbit around an enemy. And this is done exactly the same way, but instead of right clicking into open space, we now right click on the enemy's track, select move, and now orbit is selected or bordered in yellow as opposed to orange because I can do it around that track. So here you can see if I move the order panel off to the right hand, uh, left hand side, it'll say uh, by using the arrow keys, you can see that says orbit target and it tells me the track at the bottom of that orbit. So if I select that now, instead of a position in space, we actually have the sphere widget appear around this enemy ship. So again, I'm going to orbit around 500 meters and at an angle. And once again, speeding up by a factor of five, you'll be able to see what I mean.
Then my engines are presented to the guns of the warship track 7605. And again, my engines are still focused towards that ship. If I order my guns to fire, whilst I'll be able to engage that light cruiser, it doesn't fully change the way that my, the bow of my ship and that the rear of my ship will then orientate towards the enemy. So could you use this in select scenarios? Absolutely. Could you orbit around a damaged battleship, for example? Yes, you could. Because as this uh, light cruiser now moves, the orbit will also move around that light cruiser. So if something is slow moving, you could definitely set an orbit uh, of 500 to 1000 meters in order to remain in position. However, it is not advisable for doing it too long or against something that can definitely punch back at you. The final movement command is form with ship. And we'll cover this in another tutorial uh, shortly after this one that'll explain exactly how to do that and the various reasons why and how you can set uh, the formations and some of the toggles down at the bottom of the ship, which will be activated once you set a formation. So at the beginning of this video, we spoke about throttle control, and now I wanna talk about flank speed. Flank speed will enable your maximum speed to go up to 150% of the original value that you would have seen in the fleet editor. So if you were at 20 meters per second, you'd be able to go up to 30 meters per second. It'll also allow you to accelerate at 150%. And that's not only your main engines, but it's also your maneuvering thrusters. The downside being as you drive your ship and its thrust is harder, it's going to start to cause damage to your thrusters. Here you can see I've already damaged thruster 3 to a value of 90% down from 100% because I had flank speed on whilst I was setting up this test. If you leave flank speed on for too long, then you will eventually burn your thrusters out and you'll be a sitting duck in the middle of the battlefield, unable to turn or unable to move forward because you've burnt out your thrusters. So when you're using flank speed as a new player, it's generally to help you do certain actions, such as moving between terrain or getting out of a bad scenario, or if you've been ambushed, turning flank speed on in order to uh, turn and orientate back to the enemy, and then turning it back to normal speed once you've brought your ship to bear. So let's have a practical demonstration of how this looks. I have the ship on the left with flank speed enabled and I have the ship on the right at 100%. And so what I'll do is I will set a movement order three kilometers forward. And once I unpause time, the ship on the left is gonna go faster than the ship on the right. We'll also then track the thruster damage that occurs. So here you can see straight away, the ship on the left is already accelerating faster than the ship on the right. But here it is just passing 25 meters per second as the ship on the right is still climbing to 17. With the ship on the right being selected, you can see that the ship on the left is accelerating quite fast. And we can also then have a look from a top-down perspective, how fast indeed the ship on the left is going. Now here you see that all our thrusters are still 100% based on the ship with the full throttle. But if we come across to the ship on the left with the flank speed enabled, you can see initially the thrusters are starting to change from green through yellow to red on the uh, panel at the bottom. And if I select my ship, thruster three, which was at 90%, is now down at 77. And our damage control teams are moving throughout our ship, trying to repair the damage that we are inflicting to our ship. Note that this is only occurring to thrusters that are indeed being used. So the main engines are propelling us forward. We're not taking any real damage to the top, but a lot to the front as we try to change the bow direction. So as we reach to the final position, you can see that ANZ Tooth has been the fastest ship with flank speed enabled and Fang is still roughly a couple hundred meters behind. And whilst all its thrusters are still fine, the ship on the left, has taken significant damage, repairing back up to 87%, and our drives have been repaired with our damage control teams moving around. However, if we continued that, eventually they'd be unable to continue to repair these thrusters, and they will continue to degrade over time. So use flank speed sparingly, and only when you need to. There are things that can modify how often you will take um, damage using the throttle control flank speed. So things such as certain drives will be able to reduce the probability of taking damage. The Sprinter class Corvette hull for the Alliance will automatically have a minus 20% reduction, and there are certain drives that will also help mitigate uh, flank speed damage. Finally, I want to have a look at the maneuvering position. So you have two options, either direct or evade. If you set your maneuvering posture to direct, 
your ships will just drive in a straight line as per your movement order. However, if you set your ship's maneuvering posture to evade, they will engage their thrusters as they move along a movement order's line in order to try to dodge incoming fire. And so this can be useful, for, particularly for smaller ships, which are more maneuverable, to be able to dodge large, slow-moving calibers of fire, such as the 450 millimeter cannons. So let's have a demonstration of this. I'll pause time for a second. I'm going to give the ship on the left a movement order uh, forward. And we'll move uh, three kilometers forward. And so that ship's going to have a maneuvering posture of direct and the ship on the right is going to have a maneuvering posture of evade. And we're just going to see what both of these ships do. By returning to normal time, you can start to see that ANZ Tooth, which has the direct maneuvering posture, is going in a straight line. However, Fang is starting to go up and then it'll start to come back down. And so what I'm gonna do is just speed up time. And you can see from the rear of the ship how Tooth continues to drive forward. However, Fang starts to go up and then comes down. It's moving off to the left. And if we watch its thrusters, you can see from the top that the ship on the front is simply moving forward, whereas there are more maneuvering thrusters being activated on the Fang until it gets into its final position. And now you would have noticed that the ship on the left made it to its final waypoint quicker because it just drove in a straight line. It didn't have to keep accelerating and decelerating in order to evade, whereas the ship on the right with the evade maneuvering posture had to keep doing that, taking it longer and longer. However, potentially, avoiding incoming fire as it moved along its movement path. Now you can also make your evade maneuvering posture a little bit better by engaging the flank speed as we previously discussed in order to accelerate and decelerate through your maneuvering thrusters and your engines will also increase. So you'll be able to dodge a little bit better. However, you would take more thruster damage if you were doing this. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. That is everything on movement. We'll do a separate tutorial on uh, positioning as it is. Um, and a few of the different techniques that are commonly used in order to uh, keep your ships at being survivable, but are also helping you get the drop on your enemy. So thanks for watching and take care.